Hi, I'm Dr. Henry Wright. I'd like to talk about panic attacks and anxiety. They're really two different things. I was asked to speak on this subject, and I probably should have separated them as individual topics now that I've thought about it. But since I've mentioned both, I'll include both because panic attacks do involve anxiety. Now, when you study, if I was to go to the DSM-5 manual on psychiatric disorders, I have visited there a few times in my learning curve, <clears throat> I would find that panic attacks actually become phobias. And they're because of a phobia. Now I've added something called phobic thinking, or phobias. And so if I was to put where the horse and the cart is here, then I'd have to add a word called phobias are what create panic attacks. But upstream is an anxiety issue that opens up the phobia that produces a panic attack. Now, I brought this back into focus because I want you to understand the process. And, and so rather than taking anxiety drugs, or go into altered states of consciousness to avoid your consciousness. God forbid you're going to lose consciousness with your conscious. <laughs> so we're not trying to introduce to you what the world's trying to do, which is altered states of consciousness, either through drugs or through other weird ways of controlling human psyche. <laughs> Let's talk about phobias, which is the root for panic attacks. If you look at the DSM-5 manual psychiatric disorders, you'll find that phobias are known as learned behavior. Boy, this is big. This is probably the biggest thing that you've ever heard about unraveling this mystery. If, if a panic attack is an anxiety issue that has become phobic, then then releases the panic attacks as a physiological response and it's a learned behavior, then do you think that we might be able to unlearn this pathway? See, your personalities are formed as you go. Your, your emotions, your feelings are accumulating either good or not so good as you grow up, as you move through life, depending on your environment and your circumstances, and depending on your mindset. That's why 2 Corinthians 10.5 is so powerful. That you're to hold every thought captive, casting down every imagination, every high and lofty thing that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God and keep you from obedience to Christ. And that you have an, a readiness to defeat all this disobedient stuff after your obedience is fulfilled. These two scriptures are so key because you can reverse your journey of horror. Now, if your mind is renewed, if you really believe that your mind can be renewed, it means your mind can be changed. And your mind is renewed by the washing, the saturation, the, old, the constant flushing of thought of the Word of God. Your mind is renewed by the washing, the flushing of truth based on Scripture. Scripture says you're to be anxious for nothing. You'd have no anxiety. Whether you live or whether you die, you're the Lord's. So much for death. What you eat, what you wear, where you live. You don't even take thought of that. Because God feeds the sparrow. Dresses a lily in the field. Have you not read, O ye of little un of unbelief? I love that that scripture is, O ye of little faith. Do you not understand that the Father is able to feed the sparrow and clothe the lily that's in the field? He's able to care for you. So we end up being preoccupied with the, with the phobic failures of a world around us, and then we assimilate it to our own personalities. So you're trained, aren't you? You're trained by the news reports. You're trained by the negativity of your friends. You're trained by, 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 by. And all of a sudden, you're flooded with impulses 
that make you phobic. And you wake up in the middle of the night with panic attacks. You wake up in the middle of the night with what if, and you can't go to sleep because what if, what if. The Bible says you take no thought for tomorrow. The evil of today is sufficient unto itself. Phobias will not let you think about today. They're projecting into tomorrow. But the Bible says take no thought for tomorrow. The evil of today is what you need to defeat. So rather than projecting into the failure of something which creates the anxiety that produces the phobias and then the panic attacks, and your body's responding to the mind-body connection to your head. But behind your head is, a, is who you are as a spirit. And God is not giving the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. So maybe you're not, your mind needs to be renewed. Maybe you need to be retrained. Paul said very clearly in Romans 7, I have two laws in my members. So don't you. You have the law of God and you have the law of sin. You do. Law of God says you're to be anxious for nothing. Law of sin says, yep, yeah, gotta think about it all the time. What's gonna go wrong? I gotta listen to news reports. I'm gonna, I'm gonna live, I'm gonna die. How about my children, my grandchildren, my God, it's gonna go. When, God, come quickly. No, you don't want to say that too quickly. You don't want to say Mar Maranatha. Everybody says Maranatha. No, that's not how that scripture reads. It's Maranatha anathema. Oh, what's that mean? God come and judge us. <laughs> no, you just want God to come, but you don't want him to judge you. <laughs> I love this scripture. If you judge yourself, God won't have to. <laughs> you know, there's some things we can do right now <clears throat> to shore up our image for that time we meet the Lord Jesus in the judgment seat of Christ. What's that got to do with this? Mindset. Mindset. Perfect peace belongs to them whose minds are fixed or stayed on the Lord. And who's the Lord? The living word of the Father. You know, when I read scripture, I mix my faith with it and I believe it for me. When it says, I'm to be anxious for nothing. I'm not going to be. It doesn't mean I'm not, am I not tempted with the possibility of being anxious. Yeah. No human is immune to temptation. But what you do with it separates you from the rest of the world and maybe from the rest of people that call themselves Christians. So, <clears throat> can you live a life and not be ruled by fear? Yes. Can you live a life and not be ruled by anxiety? Yes. Can you live a life and not become phobic? And remember, phobia is our learned behavior. Is it possible that you can have your mind renewed with the Word of God so that even though you have the law of sin still there, which produces a, could produce a panic attack, you now have the law of God that you meditate on day and night. It's now the law of God. And the law of God, I got to tell you something, this is bigger than big. <laughs> the law of God is superior to the law of sin. So, if we're going to have every thought captive, we're going to hold thought captive to things that are superior, not following things that are inferior. And the law of sin is inferior to the superiority of the law of God. Now, I've told you something really important in defeating panic attacks. See, panic attacks is your body responding to phobias, learned behavior, meditating on things that can go wrong, not holding every thought captive, not casting in every imagination, being anxious for everything, listening to a spirit of fear talk to you all the time, get around the news, get around your friends, oh, it's so horrible, it's, blah, 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 blah. My goodness, where are you? I have to tell you that all panic attacks can be defeated if you understand what I've just said. Have your mind renewed, cast it down, repent to God for listening to it. And when the feelings come, the anxiety issue, the phobia issue, 
that would produce the panic attack? Say no. And quote scripture. Tell fear. I hear you're talking to me, but can I talk to you? For it is written. See, that's how Jesus defeated Satan. If you read the scriptures, Jesus always defeated Satan in that direct contact. Now, Jesus' temptation with a very simple statement, for it is written. See, that's how you have your mind renewed. You mix your faith with that. And what's going to happen, I promise you, has happened to thousands of people that have listened to me teach and represent God's mind to them is that when you're tempted, it's going to be inferior to the superiority of your conclusion. And those feelings the enemy can no longer use to control you. And even though you may have remembrance, and even though you may remember that, that, that trigger point, it won't trigger you to serve the law of sin. Something to think about. If you have enjoyed this presentation, give it a thumbs up. Ring the bell, subscribe, or leave us a comment.